Hi there, welcome to Bella's Vistas. Please like and subscribe. Don't forget to click the notification bell and find out about our future videos. Well, we've had a COVID lockdown. Everything's pretty well closed down. We can't leave the province at all. And really with the weather we've had in Ontario, we don't really want to go anywhere with so much snow and bad weather. We're pretty well staying at home. I've been photographing the birds in my backyard and we've been going through all of our old trips trying to plan where we might go when the weather clears up or when the lockdown is over and we can travel to another country. I'd like to go back to Arizona again. I'd like to go out to the west coast of Canada, go to Vancouver Island and see the eagles. We got a lot of snow around here, ice and whatnot. But wow, Mary was working on the computer and one of our hard drives started making a lot of noise. A three terabyte hard drive, it was pretty old, it was five years out of warranty. I'd wanted to replace it anyway. All the files were fortunately backed up on other drives. So I bought a six terabyte Western Digital Black Drive from Canada Computers. They were a little bit cheaper than uh, anybody else, even Amazon. So here I am putting the drive in it. This computer has slides that you put the hard drive in to a little slide like this, it's rubber mounted. So I'm putting the hard drive in, putting the screws in place. Then I have to put it back into the computer case here. Now This is gonna give us a little more room because like I said, those three terabytes weren't being used really. And now we've got six to take its place. So we've got six terabytes on three different drives. So we've got 18 terabytes of storage right there in the computer. And then we have external backup drives. They're like uh, Western Digital book drives, six terabytes each. And uh, that's where we back up another copy of our files. It's very important to have more than two copies even. It's good to have three copies of all your important files. Spend a lot of money going around taking pictures and you don't want to lose any of them. It's a little bit crowded in here, but it's not bad at all. This is a nice case. It's a nice quiet case. Good power supply in it. And it's being put all back together now, so we're ready to roll. Here we are. We're looking at our channel. These are our travels where we've been. And I want to look at Taos because I'm thinking about Taos, New Mexico, where there was a church there. And I think I might like to make a photograph from that church. There's the church. It's St. Francis of Assisi Church. There, oh, that's the one I want right there. That's the file that I want to print. Look at that. I really love that shot. We were there several times. I've been there in the winter and the summer, but this I think is my best shot. In the winter, there was a Christmas wreath on the church that I didn't particularly like the way it looked sort of took away from the church so we went back I've been back a few times and this is the shot that we want to print wow look at that we checked it out several times there's some sunspots on the lens there are little flares from the lens but we've decided to leave those in there's no need to make it perfect I think this is just going to be a wonderful photograph I'm really excited about printing this First thing we're going to have to do is make some test prints. So we get the files. This is another angle on the church. I really like this one too, but there's our test strip that we print. We have these color tests from uh, the people that make the profiling software that I use for printing. And uh, we're going to put this together and run it through the printer. Here it is. It's printing now. Look at there. Printing, printing, printing. And there we go. Epson 9880. I'm using metallic paper here. This is uh, glossy metallic paper from Epson. It's pretty amazing, really. It's, it's the paper backing is sort of silver, and it's got a high gloss to it. It's really nice. It really brings out the color. The metallic paper is amazing. There's our test print. I'm gonna let that dry for a while, and then I'll chop it up, and we'll have a close look at it. But I like that one with the sunset there, but the one with the statue in it, I think the statue one is the best. I'm going to even chop them down so I can compare them even closer than just side by side. I'm cutting them on my cutter. I have a backlight on the cutter so I can see where the cut's going to happen. 
you can see a little bit there where the blade is lit up from underneath. There we go. And they of course fall down on the floor and I have to go pick them up. But there's my test prints. Look at there. Now, I like that print too, but wow. This is my favorite, absolutely hands down my favorite shot from that trip. Just, I'm so impressed with that. I really like it. Wow. And the way I like animals, you know, St. Francis of Assisi is all right by me. Now we're sending the finished print off. There we go. The printer's printing. Got lots of ink left in there. Yeah, a couple channels are getting down, but I got two spare cartridges in the cupboard. Each color is like $160, something like that. There's eight cartridges in the printer, so it's a bit of an expense keeping it on. Here we go. You can see a bit of the gloss on that paper. Like I said, it's a metallic, uh, glossy paper. It's very nice. It really holds a sharp, sharp detail. When you're printing on canvas, it kind of mutes the colors a little bit. Here the print's coming out. You can see where the adobe's cracked away a little bit in a few places. They redo this church every year, from what I understand. Ansel Adams had been there taking pictures way back in the day. And there's my print. I'm so happy with this. Once again, I have to let it dry for a day or so before I can go ahead and finish it. My finishing room is downstairs, so I've got to go down uh, a few flights of stairs to go down there and work on it, because I'm going to dry mount it. So there the prints had a day or so to dry. I really, I love this print. Wow, I think it's fantastic. <laughs> but there I go again. I really enjoy photography. It's my whole life now. Beautiful. Now I'm down in the finishing room, so I've got a piece of cool tack dry mounting board. The cool tack has an adhesive right on the face of it, so the photograph will stick to it. Now I'm just going to trim it down. I'm going to leave a little bit of a border when I dry mount it, but I don't want to leave too much space because, well, you don't want to waste the mounting board. So I'm going to trim it down a bit, clean the board really carefully. You want your table to be really clean. You don't want any dust getting in there, and you don't want any grease on the bottom of your ruler getting on the photograph either. It's a cork back ruler, and I wipe it down every time before I use it like this. Now I'm trimming the edges off. The top and bottom are fine, it doesn't matter, because I'll cut that off after I dry mount it, because the board is 24 and my print is 23 and a half, so it's gonna fit just perfectly. Now I'm gonna put it in the press. Here I've got a sandwich. This is made up of uh, paper, it's silicone release paper. I think it's from Bien Fang. I use Bien Fang materials a lot. It's a silicone, it won't hurt the face of the photograph. Put it in here, and then put it in the press. Get in there I've got brown paper and dry mounting board, top and bottom. I put it in there, in between, right in there. It's sandwiched in the press. I have to do this in sections, like three times, because my press isn't big enough to do it all in one shot. It'd be nice if you could do it all in one. But I start off in the middle and then I do turn it around and do the middle on the other side and uh, it takes a little while but you know what the heck. It was like a six or eight week trip to take the photographs and then uh, a lot of time picking out which one you want to print and it takes a half an hour or 40 minutes for the print to come out of the printer. So. It's time intensive, it takes a lot of time and a lot of effort. There, now I'm going to trim the edges off, the final cut on everything. I trim all around the print because the glass is the same size as the print. Now this is a little bit different the way I'm going to print it. A lot of times I would use a mat for a photograph, but that adds like two or three inches all around the photograph and it just, everything gets bigger and heavier. So this is the way I'm going to handle this is with a metal frame, a silver metal frame, and I'm going to use on the glass, I'm going to use a special technique you'll see in a minute. 
There's the photograph. I'm very happy with it. Now I gotta clean this glass really, really clean. The last thing you want is to have a dirt spot or something on the glass. It takes a long while to get the glass all polished up, but I tell you, it's well worth it. Every minute that you spend cleaning it, to take it apart and redo it will take you hours, so it's better to get it right the first time. There, I'm turning this around so it's going to fit. I'd like to have a bigger bench, but if I had a bigger bench, there'd be more stuff on it, so it's all diminishing returns on everything. Now, this is what I was talking about. This is uh, an acrylic strip that's back with the 3M adhesive tape on the back. There I am peeling off the tape so that it's going to stick. It's like a double stick adhesive tape that's applied to the back of this acrylic and then I put this around the glass. And the purpose of this is to keep the photograph away from the glass. You don't want the glass to contact the photograph because it could stick and you might get Newton rings and it's just this is the way to do it. I just peel off the backing and stick it carefully to the edge of the glass. It takes a little bit of skill to do this, but it's, it's not impossible. Anybody can do it. I buy this material from one of my framing suppliers. I've got it stuck down. It's trimmed. A little bit precise. I should fix that table because of the way it bounces around. is more annoying than anything, but you might break something one day with that. So there I am putting the strip around the final piece, I think. And it looks good. It really looks good to me. There's something about a photograph under glass. Like, I like the canvas too, but there I am with my little foxtail brush, making sure there's no dust here. You can use a compressor or vacuum cleaner sometimes too, but there we put the photograph on there. Flip it around. Look at that, it looks nice just with the black edge around it, don't you think? Wow, looks like a Cibachrome print with that black edge. Remember Cibachrome? Man, that goes back a while. I had some of the first Cibachrome material ever to come into Canada a long, long time ago. We bought it directly from Ilford. Unfortunately, it all got stolen from me, but that's another story. So here we're just checking the glass. It's going to be fantastic. I'm really, really excited to see this photograph on the wall. A little bit of paint or something on the glass here. I'm going to scrape it off. Like I said, you want to make sure the glass is perfectly clean. I look at it with bright lights and turn it around and look at it this way and that way. Still, sometimes something will get past you once in a while. Usually I use a wooden frame, but in this instance I'm going to use a metal frame metal aluminum frame I guess it's a silver frame it's looking very nice putting the top piece on now there's screw corners that hold it together just screw them in with the screwdriver on the corner and away you go being so fussy about everything you want it to be perfect don't want anything wrong put the top on there Make sure it fits, and it looks great. I'm very happy with it. Okay. Now you'll see the corner pieces where they fit in. The little corner pieces slide in. It's all tightened up and screwed together. Now the thing is, how are you going to hang that up on the wall? Well, you're going to put a wire on the back of it, that's how. Yeah. Look at that. Just double checking for any dirt anywhere. I, I was so scared that some dust or something might get in behind there. Now, I measure one-third. I was told one-third is the magic number for this, and I just do it in my head. Put the spacing so I've got one-third from the top. Put the wire through. This wire is good for 90 pounds. It's a soft strand stainless steel wire. It's a little bit easier on your fingers than the stuff that we used to use back in the day. 
wire that I had way back then was like a quarter inch thick and wouldn't handle the weight that this new wire does and it would corrode and everything like that. It's a much better way to do it. Twist the wire around. I put it through there, tie a knot in it, and then wind the rest of it up. And there it is, it's all finished, wow. There's some other shots of the church. Wow, we, different angles, different things. Thanks for visiting Bella's Vistas. Please like and subscribe. Come on back again real soon.